the Tigers from Princeton. A relentless second-half performance wore a worthy Ivy League foe to its knees. And by game's end, Lottie Baxter and company earned a passing grade that was just good enough. Tonight, the Terps attempt to school the Huskies of UConn. Jim Calhoun's group graduated past GW with Johnny Selby driving a balanced offense that was coupled with a willing brand of A-plus hustle. It's the BBNT final exam, and it's next. MCI Center in Washington, D.C. for a look-see at the championship game of the 7th Annual bb &T Classic benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation. This evening, we're excited to see Maryland entertain UConn. A very pleasant good evening to you, along with John Feinstein. I'm Joe Beninati. John, yesterday for the Terrapins, it wasn't about guard play. It was all about the big guys on the interior who got the job done to put down a pesky Princeton squad. Uh, it certainly was, Joe. Very frustrating afternoon for Gary Williams and his Maryland Terrapins, but they were saved in the second half by their offensive rebounding, specifically Chris Wilcox off the bench and Lonnie Baxter, their leading scorer, was the one guy who was able to score consistently throughout the game. But even when Maryland missed shots. Even when Baxter missed, there was Wilcox with the left-handed tip in. And that was the case throughout the second half. They combined for 11 offensive boards. And if not for that, Maryland would have been playing in the 5:30 game this afternoon. Wilcox has done a lot of damage coming off the bench for the Terrapins. As far as UConn is concerned, they had an easier time dispatching uh, GW yesterday in what was a foul-filled affair. They got a big, big point performance from Johnny Selby, and then they spread the wealth out. Johnny Selby the only senior starter for Jim Calhoun. Very young team for him. 10 for 13 from the field. The lefties can always shoot the ball, Joe, as you know, but he got plenty of help, especially from his three teammates who all scored in double figures, starting with Ben Gordon, the freshman point guard, who hit four threes from deep, and then Karan Butler and sophomore Tony Robertson also chipped in with double-figure performances. John, you know obviously full well, better than most of us, how much this bb &T tournament has meant to those off the court. Bob Sosi has the story of one particular Maryland player who will always remember this tournament fondly. Joe, that's right. This tournament marked the emergence last year of Byron Mouton in a Maryland Terrapin uniform. The Terps had lost three consecutive games coming into the bb &T Classic when Gary Williams inserted Mouton in the starting lineup. He scored 17 in the championship game, made the all-tournament squad, and helped the Terps win 10 consecutive games. Gary said of Mouton, he gave us enthusiasm on the court. He's not afraid to show his emotions. It seems like coach, like player, Joe. Very much so, Bob, and he continues to hope to light a fire if need be tonight for the Terrapins against the Huskies. Stick around. We've got the starting lineup and the opening tip for you from MCI Center. This is the championship game with the bb &T Classic. The 2001 bb &T Classic benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation is brought to you by bb &T. Budweiser, today's military, Advance Auto Parts, and by Geico Direct. Two teams off to solid starts in their 2001-2002 season. MCI Center is the venue for the uh, bb &T championship match between UConn and Maryland. And your local Toyota dealers provide this look, John, at the starting lineups. First for the Huskies from Stores, Connecticut. supposed to get the starting lineups. Okay. Karan Butler, of course, is their leading scorer. Johnny Selby, who had the big night, is the other forward. Amika ok Okafor is the center, still learning, just a youngster. Talik Brown, the point guard, had a very poor game yesterday, Joe, and will need to play better. And Tony Robertson, who's been a pleasant surprise for them at the wing guard, starts next to Brown. Let's flip the coin. Sorry for the cross-up, John. Maryland's starting lineup going this way, as we see Mouton Baxter holding. Dixon yesterday is always a 
thief, and he'll continue to be tonight. Dixon is the best player Maryland has. He's an All-American. But again, let's focus on the point guard spot because Steve Blake also had a poor game yesterday. Both these teams like to run, like to push the ball off the court. So the play of Brown and Blake at the point guard spots will be key right from the start. MCI Center's filling up. Plenty of enthusiastic Husky fans in attendance. And you'll hear roars for the Turtles in just a few moments when we bring you back after these words from your local stations. Squarely on this evening's championship game, Jim Calhoun is the head coach for the UConn Huskies, an impeccable win-loss mark. And on the opposite side, we know Gary Williams full well for the Terrapins, John. Well, in game one, we had two coaches with a combined three years coaching experience. This, In this game, we have two coaches with a combined 54 years coaching experience and 1,056 career wins. Jim Calhoun won his 600th game in the season opener against Vanderbilt. He's got 602. Gary Williams has 454. Pretty good pedigrees on both ends. Very much so. Donnie Gray, Bob Donato, Art McDonald are the officials for this one. Maryland against UConn, and UConn likes this uh, MCI center floor. They've never lost here. That's right. They've beaten Georgetown the twi twi two times they played them here. They won two NCAA tournament games here in 1998, and, of course, they won yesterday. It's about to say pretty good pedigree on these three officials, too. They're underway. Maryland in the white with a basketball. It's Steve Blake rapidly moving up the assist charts in College Park. Holden shadowed by Okafor. Juan Dixon trying to slither loose from his man. Holden and Okafor again. Dixon as they play a two-man game, and this is a travel turnover against Maryland in the first half minute. Good call by Bob Donato. He shuffled his feet. Gary Williams pointing it to Art McDonald at the baseline, saying, well, why didn't he have the call? Well, that's because Bob Donato had a better angle on it, actually. Sophomore point guard Talik Brown from Queens, New York, will walk it up against Blake. Keep an eye on this uh, Blake-Brown matchup right from the beginning. Selvi was huge yesterday. Robertson on the entry. Okafor was shoved as he made his turn to the basket. Yeah, Lonnie Baxter got him there on the hip as he was trying to turn and spin toward the basket. And one thing Maryland cannot afford is for Lonnie Baxter to have early foul trouble. Yesterday, he didn't. there you see the hook with the left arm. Smart play by the senior, but the experienced official, Tom Gray, saw the smart play by the senior. Maryland cannot afford Baxter in foul trouble. That is their weakness when it does occur. Even though Chris Wilcox has played very well off the bench, they want to have that three-man rotation going, not have to depend just on Wilcox and Holden. Emeka Okafor, a 56% free throw shooter, has put the first point of the game on the board. 6'9", freshman has them both. Blake and Brown will be talking about the point guards as John referenced in our open throughout. Holden, skip pass for Mutah, angling in, using the glass, he had it blocked. Leaping to the air, trying to make that save as Robertson. He kept it alive only for Maryland to attack again. And this will be a 94-foot game all night. Both teams will play up-tempo defense and up-tempo offense. Holden, marked by Okafor. Taj Holden with six on the clock. Inside, Baxter. He had that deflected by Okafor. Jumping jack early on. Very quick leaper, Okafor. Got off his feet very quickly there. Talik Brown knifing into that lane. Didn't get the runner to go, and will push the pedal again. Blake, no numbers advantage. Takes it himself. Ripped out of there, but this time, it's goaltending against Okafor. Chip Calhoun, of course, did not like that call. It was close, but it looked to me like the ball was coming down. See it here on the replay. Blake goes all the way. Close. Very close. And as the live action resumes, Maryland's full court pressure forces the turnover. UConn did not enter it cleanly. There will be turnovers in this basketball game, Joe. I'll go out on a limb and say that right away. You know me, always on those limbs. Marty Aronoff's going to be a busy man tonight. You're not walking much of a tightrope there. <laughs> tightrope's about eight feet wide. Baxter dished it outside, holding. Dixon arcs a three. Mouton has the floor offensive rebound. And a new shot clock for the Terrapins. 2-2 early on. 
You know, the second minute are we in this, the BB&T championship match. Joe Beninati, John Feinstein, Bob Sosi, glad you have tuned in tonight. Mouton. Rebound Okafor. And Talik Brown with eyes peeled for Karan Butler. That's a misfire from two and a board for Baxter. Butler shot poorly yesterday and picking up where he didn't leave off yet right away. Holden leaning in, and they're going to call this against Taj Holden, an offensive foul. And, and you know what? That's a foul that occurs because Taj Holden has such a huge body. I mean, look at him. Anytime he starts to back up, he's going to move the guy. He's twice as big as Okafor. Okafor takes a step backward, and Art McDonald says that's a foul. Holden, the 20-year-old junior from New Jersey. 2-2, Maryland and UConn. Huskies in the blue. The early shooting, subpar for these two teams. Both teams quick shooting, trying to get set a quick tempo. Selvi. Oh, that's right right sloppy on the outside. And Talik Brown kind of standing around a little bit. And actually, he should have gone to get the ball when once Selvi got his back turned to the basket. Already four turnovers split between these two clubs in the first two and a half minutes. I think we'll see Ben Gordon fairly early in this basketball game. A player with tremendous range. Baxter pump fakes open four, drives for the finish on the baseline. Well, that time Lonnie Baxter turned Okafor's shot blocking ability against him because he shot faked him. Okafor went up for the block. Watch Baxter shot fake right by him. Nice move down the baseline. That's a senior taking advantage of a freshman right there. Jim Calhoun made a point yesterday that he has a young team. Most teams are young in college basketball these days. But Maryland is an exception to that rule. They start three seniors and two juniors, and they are that rare old team. This is one sport where you want to be old. Lonnie finished up 19 and 12 yesterday. Only three of 10 from the floor, however. He was good at the line. Selby put it on the floor and traveled in the process. Wilcox has gotten an early start as a six man off the bench. He's in there for the Terrapins, number 54 in the white. This is fairly typical, Chris Wilcox coming in early. He, he's sort of like a six starter in effect for Merrill. Juan Dixon has some room. He didn't get a friendly roll. Mouton on the stick back. No, sir. And Tony Roberts in the junior guard has it for UConn. Talik Brown, burrowing for some space, blocked by Wilcox. Talik Brown needs to get himself under control here. Settles it a bit. Selvi powers to the glass. Too strong on the, the lay-in. That was a good pass by Brown. Selvi just didn't finish. 5-2 for the Terps. Baxter, aggressively in the lane, and he draws the foul. Called it on Robertson from behind on the help. Looks like he had a lot of ball. But Bob Donato said he got him with the body. And Gary Williams early into his coach mode on the players bench for the Terps. Gary Williams lives in his coach mode. Mm -hmm. That's a he's laid back right now, relatively speaking. Laid back like a caged tiger. <laughs> Lonnie Baxter drops in another freebie. And of course, Maryland making free throws is a big bonus because they have been a very poor free throw shooting team through their first six games. Baxter, three for three. The point I was making about three of ten from the floor was actually three of ten from the line yesterday. Perfect three for three so far tonight. Butler fires. Local four, sky for it, so did Wilcox and tap it for Dixon. Good defense by Mouton there at the top of the key on Butler. Dixon trying to freeze Robertson. Baxter top of the key. 7-2. Lonnie's got five of the first seven for the Turks. A baby half hook for him. A little cock snare call. Okafor continues to rule the inside. Robertson winds up in the seats. The basketball goes back over to Maryland when we bring you back. The Turks, an early quick start. Lonnie Baxter, the driving force.
And right there, Joe, is the real star of this tournament. Peter Teeley, the man who came up with the idea seven years ago to put on a charity basketball tournament here in Washington. And that's the reason we're here tonight. That's the reason why kids in need have received $3.3 million the last six years because of Peter Teeley. Super job all the way around. Blake enters for Dixon. Follow-up tip by Mouton won't go. Baxter. He was huge at the start of the uh, maryland Princeton game yesterday, and he's uh, picked right up where he left off. Jimmy Calhoun just asked for a technical foul, and he, may, he might get ejected here if he's not careful. Bogdanato's already teed him up once, and Jim's out on the court. He, came, he got the first technical because he was out on the court. He's still out on the court. Of course, when the clock is dead, you can be on the court without being considered out of the coaching box. But Jim thought that Lonnie Baxter fouled coming over the back. Got, just got furious, came out on the court. Bob Donato teed him up immediately. And then when Jim went back out to argue, Bob Donato keeping his cool, because a less experienced official might have ejected him right there. But Bob Donato did not. And now Jim Calhoun has calmed down somewhat. You're going to get that team. Might as well get your money's worth. Well, he got his money's worth. And I think he's trying to make a point to his team. I was going to say coming out of the break, this is a very young Connecticut team. This is their first big game of the season. They've only played three games. They won against Vanderbilt in the opener. They had a walkover against New Hampshire. They played GW, which was a good, solid team yesterday. But they were in control of the game. Now they're playing a second-ranked team in the, in the, in the nation. Again, you know, here on what is basically a home court for Maryland. It's a good experience for Connecticut, and Jim's trying to light a fire under his team. There were some who were concerned about Maryland's rebounding capacities. They've demonstrated themselves to be pretty good on the board so far tonight in that particular flurry. They have jumped to an 11-2 advantage over UConn. Juan Dixon this season has missed just one free throw attempt in 25 tries. Sort of the opposite of his teammates. Brown double travel, but he walks. Fourth turnover against the Huskies. And here comes Gordon. This is not, not surprising. Talik Brown really struggling early in the game. And they're not going to let him get in. It's like the officials are right now saying to Jim Calhoun, you, you know, you just don't come out on the court. <laughs> He should have been able to get in there. Connecticut, 10 possessions of the basketball, just a couple points. Maryland has uh, come out and taken an 11-2 advantage. Wilcox, shovel pass inside. Dixon lost it, got it back. And now the Huskies are on, three on one. Finishing for Butler, he lost the handle on his way to the rack. This will stay UConn ball. Uh, he lost the handle because somebody got a hand in there. I think it might have been Steve Blake coming from the right side. See who it is. Yeah, Steve, no, it's Baxter coming from the left side. Nice play by Lonnie Baxter because Butler was about to go up and slam it emphatically. Now Brown. Talik Brown comes out. Out, Gordon, do you see him? The 18-year-old freshman from Mount Vernon, New York. Robertson hanging. Selby missed the uh, stuff putback. Wilcox outlets it for Steve Blake. Connecticut just can't buy one so far. Wilcox puts it inside. It's another turnover. Karan Butler for UConn. Robertson 0 for 7 now from the floor. The follow-up goes down. First field goal of the night on the tip-in. Nice hustle play there by Karan Butler, giving his team a much-needed boost there. One of the reasons UConn has not been shooting the ball well is they're not shooting squared up. They're, they're just taking kind of wild shots going to the basket. This is another example, not a good shot, but Butler with good hustle there, and Taj holding fouls coming over the back. Karan Butler, a young player who wants to play himself into the national spotlight perhaps a little bit tonight against Gary Williams' Terrapins. And why not with the Terrapins in the recent rankings, which came out at 5 o'clock today, John? Number three in the AP poll, number two in USA Today poll, the highest, that number two ranking, the highest the Terps have been in school history. Well, I think Gary will be more concerned about what the ranking is in March. Rankings in basketball, fortunately, are just for guys like you and me to talk about as opposed to in football, where they rule and shouldn't. Butler, the three-point play, the old-fashioned way. Blake back on it for Maryland. Blake takes a shot of his own. 
It's a good sign for the Terrapins, Steve Blake making a bucket after yesterday's struggles. Finished up with eight assists against the Tigers yesterday. He didn't shoot it particularly well and was sloppy in that first half. Bunch of turnovers. Gordon, straight away. Robertson fights for his own rebound and earns it. I'm not sure Connecticut has taken a squared up shot to the basket out of their offense yet in this game. Gordon, another leader. Getting the offensive rebound. Some of that. Sorry, Joe. Oh, nice move up and under. Pretty work there by Justin Brown, the seven-footer off the bench. Up and under from the kid from down under. Well put. And as Blake tried to slide between defenders, he was held. And what I was saying when I was talking over you a moment ago is that one of the reasons Connecticut has not shot squared up is because Maryland's played great defense thus far. Very aggressive man-to-man. Non-shooting foul. Drew Nicholas has entered the game. Puts it into Lonnie Paxter. And Paxter has been a cause for concern on the inside. He just drew another foul. Well, if you're UConn, you could not let Maryland enter the ball to Lonnie Baxter in the low post that easily. Steve Blake just caught the inbounds pass and threw an easy bounce pass to Baxter as if it was a shell drill. And Jim Calhoun immediately jumped off the bench and said to his big man, what the heck are you thinking there? And that's why Justin Brown's coming out. Selvi back in for the Huskies. Baxter started the night making his first three free throws. Clanged one there. 14-7 now for the Terrapins, the co-host of this uh, BB&T tournament with GW. The Colonials a winner earlier on this evening as the Huskies cough it up again. Sixth turnover, two for 11 for the field from the floor. That's what I'm talking about. Excellent Maryland defense being a factor. Nicholas, Blake, Wilcox, Baxter, and Dixon on the floor for the white jersey Terrapins. Juan Dixon has a lot of room. Bullseye. Jim Calhoun's calling a timeout, and he's not going to yell at the officials this time. None too pleased with a defensive effort there. Quickly calling his team over to get into the huddle. Lonnie Baxter inside. Plenty of reasons to show his highlights. Baxter's just been all over the boards right from the start, just as he was yesterday, Joe. He was the only guy, really, who came out ready to play for Maryland yesterday in the first half. If he hadn't been around in the first half, Princeton might have had more than a 13-point lead at halftime, and he's picked right up. And the reason Jim Calhoun called that timeout is because he is disgusted, not so much with his team's offense, because Maryland deserves some credit for that, but they have been very slow rotating to the basketball right from the start on defense. And Jim Calhoun's team are built on defense, and they have not played very good defense thus far in the game. An especially young squad. Field goal shooting percentages, nothing to really brag about on either side. Gordon was challenged, and this is going to be a turnover as Gordon was worked over by Juan Dixon. Well, this is the kind of game that Jim Calhoun knew with a young team playing against an experienced Maryland team. It, it could be a long night, but they're going to learn from it one way or another. Might be a painful lesson, though. Juan Dixon keeps it alive. Baxter stops it through. Loose balls. Every loose ball is going to the guys in red and white. Nine of the 19 for Lonnie Baxter. Okafor settles the offense for UConn. Talik Brown back in there. Ben Gordon matched up with Juan Dixon. Gordon looking to clear things out. Karan Butler. An elbow jumper. Baxter, another rebound. Blake on the advance. Dixon looks over the top. Baxter, quick feed inside. Dixon, fade away. No, but the follow-up is good. Wilcox. 21-7. And there's trouble brewing for UConn early on. Another offensive board for Maryland. That's their seventh 
in a little under eight minutes, and that's why Jim Calhoun called that timeout, because he, what he's saying to his players right now is, look, Maryland's going to play good defense. I can accept missed shots. I can accept the fact that this is a very good team, second, third rank, depending on your poll. What I can't accept is being out-hustled, and right now we're being out-hustled. That's what he's saying. That's unacceptable. Here you see Mouton with the miss. Wilcox keeps it alive. Dunk for Baxter. Nice pass by Juan Dixon. And here again, little jump shot, no good. And then weak side rebound. Chris Wilcox all over the board there, and nobody there, nobody there to box him out. Decibel level, you could tell from that huddle, very high from Jim Calhoun. His team is falling behind by 14 to the Terrapins. With 12 minutes to go in the first half. Talik Brown got ripped off by one of the ACC's best steel guys, Dixon. Then he lost it. Out of control, Gordon on the wing for Sylvie. Put back Butler. He's going to have another chance for three the old-fashioned way. Racehorse basketball, we're going to see that all night long, and that's why a 14-point lead really isn't that big a deal this early in the game, except that Connecticut has struggled so in their half-court offense. They need more of this. Even as Selby misses, good defense by Mouton. There is Butler, second offensive rebound bucket he's had in this game. In fact, I think those are his only two buckets. Ron Butler, 67% from the line, drains this one, brings the lead back to 11. UConn and Maryland, Jim Calhoun and Gary Williams, fiery, animated, as always. Black wants to test your college basketball trivia knowledge. Who are the three former Maryland Terrapins to win ACC Men's Basketball Player of the Year honors? Three of them. Hint, one of them wasn't Gary Williams, although he was a very fine guard at Maryland in the 1960s. I'll take note of that. Gary Williams, class of uh, 68. 68. Drew Nicholas, very impressive the junior. Great shooter, and he's improved his ball handling a great deal. These are two teams that don't necessarily mind playing an up-tempo style. They've gotten their wish so far, and so far to Maryland's liking. 21-10 as we approach the midway mark of the first half. Will Cox angling for some space. Brown rips the rebound out of there. Talik Brown will run. Ben Gordon pulls up and fires. Back over to Maryland. Very rarely do you see a guy catch the ball with his left hand in transition, switch it to the right, and be able to make a shot. That, that was a freshman shot that Ben Gordon just took. And Jim Calhoun will chat with him about it right now. That's what he's saying. You can't catch the ball with your left hand and shoot with the right. Are you eavesdropping in the huddle, or do you have an earpiece to Jim? Well, great minds think alike. So do mediocre minds. But. <laughs> You might leave me out of it there on both instances. <laughs> Joe Benadi, John Feinstein, courtside, Bob Sosti working the crowd for us. Courtside as well. Dixon way short from three. Selby fast breaking for Talik Brown. Nice give and go. And that was really a rare, poorly thought out shot by Juan Dixon. He was beyond his normal shooting range, and that's why the shot came up so short. Huskies trail by nine. Maryland in the white. Drew Nicholas calling out the offensive set with Steve Blake on the bench. Newtown alone. Well, look at Wilcox Scott inside. Foul before the shot. Another offensive rebound for the Terrapins. Their eighth. They've just been all over that offensive glass. Unfortunately for Jim Calhoun, he can't call a timeout after every offensive rebound, although I'm sure he'd like to. There you see the reach in right after Wilcox corralled that rebound. Wilcox, a 19-year-old sophomore, just ferocious on the boards. Yeah, very, again, he's the quickest sleeper Maryland has. Dixon sits. Nicholas finding Wilcox, the wraparound for Blake. And there'll be a backcourt. Good move by... I was going to say good move by Blake to pick it up, but it really didn't make any difference because they'll inbound it from the same spot. After the violation, fifth turnover against uh, the Terps. We see Scott Hazleton get in to the act for UConn. Both these coaches like to use their benches and have tonight already and will continue to do so. Okafor 
Over Baxter, didn't get it to fall. Blake comes back, pedal to the middle. Kick out for Nicholas for three. Blake, the offensive rebound. That's Blake doing some of that sneaky stuff that he's very good at. Just sneaks in there for an offensive rebound. It was a good pass to Drew Nicholas on the penetration. Nicholas just couldn't convert. Never look in that youngster's eyes. He is very, very good at looking defenders off. Jim Calhoun continues to argue with the officiating after this one is whistled against uh, Karan Butler. It's interesting when a coach gets an early tee, how that affects his relationship during the game with the officials, because these guys don't want to throw Jim Calhoun out of here. So they're going to give him a lot of rope. The question is, will he go to the end of that rope? Officials never like to throw a coach out, especially a coach like Jim Calhoun, who's won a national championship and been doing this for 30 years. Nicholas to the line, just a 53% shooter in the early going. This one won't fall for him. Talik Brown, former McDonald's High School All-America, to Johnny Silby with authority, as they say. And Gary Williams just called the timeout. And the reason he called the timeout was because there was no baseline help on that. That's a basic of your of your defense. That's why he says, Where, where's the baseline help? And Selby got to go right to the basket untouched, and no coach likes to see that. Both of these coaches, John, in the early going, taking the rulers out and cracking their team's knuckles. Well, again, this is a big early season game for both these guys. It, it's, it's, it's a benchmark. Now, Maryland's already played two big games against Arizona and Illinois. Lost to Arizona, played great in Cole Fieldhouse to beat second-ranked Illinois last Tuesday night. But this is a big game. And remember one thing. These guys were both in the Big East. Not at the same time. Gary Williams left Boston College the year that Jim Calhoun went to Connecticut. But they're very familiar with each other. And this is a this is an intense rivalry between the coaches, not just the teams. Talked about Maryland's sturdy rankings in the recent AP and USA Today polls. UConn just outside the top 25 in the coaches poll. They're 27th. In the AP, they're 28th. They're underrated, regardless of tonight's outcome. Blake on the bounce entry, ripped off by Selby, and then he got fouled by Wilcox. I'll tell you this right now, UConn will be a top 20 team before this season is over, and they'll be a factor in the NCAA tournament because the guy over there opposite us can really coach. Enter Taj Holden, exit Chris Wilcox. Maryland in the midst of a three-minute span without a point. It's 21-14 is the Huskies. Nip away at that lengthy lead, which was at 1.14. Well, Connecticut settled down a little bit on defense. They're still struggling in their offense, but their defense has settled down a little bit. Talik Brown, wraparound, bounce pass. Follow up for Selby, who was white hot yesterday. Well, that's three offensive rebound baskets for Connecticut during this little run. Steve Blake, the junior out of Florida for Taj Holden. Picked off by Selby again, anticipating that entry feed. Yeah, poor entry feed by Blake. Karan Butler skying to the window. And as I said, 14-point lead early in a game like this one doesn't mean very much, does it? Do the math. It's an 11-0 run for the guys in blue. Dixon looking to quiet them. Rebound, Hazelton. Yeah, now he's got to call that. Now, Jim Calhoun doesn't like the call because he's saying that, that uh, Hazleton didn't get any room from Byron Mouton here, but he's on the ground. He, he's on the ground. He's allowed to get in and put his hands up, and he did, and the elbow may have been unintentional, but it caught Mouton right in the face. So Hazleton flailing around, caught Mouton, gives the ball back to Merrill. Juan Dixon slashing in there. It's over the back on Holden. These guys are going to the rim in a serious way in the first 11 plus minutes, attacking the rim. Juan Dixon really struggling with his shooting. Marty Aronoff points out one for 10. But I'll tell you this, he won't stop shooting, and Gary Williams doesn't want him to stop shooting because that's what shooters do. 
They shoot their way out of the slump. If I took my notes properly, just two of nine yesterday. Hasn't been a dead-eye bb &T for Juan Dixon. But what does he do there? He comes from behind and makes a steal. Because that's the kind of player he is. Even when he's shooting poorly, he does all the other things, and he did that yesterday. That's Unrivaled when it comes to steals. He's got uh, three of them already tonight. 7.55 to go. First half, 21-18 Maryland. Again, they volleyball it around, and Talik Brown has the breakaway. Smart play by Talik Brown there on the end of the break because he was tempted to try and go up and do a dunk, and then he said, no, no, I've got guys on me. I better take the layup. First game was a roller coaster between GW and Princeton. This one, too, ups and downs. Blake. No on the three. Emeka Okafor clears it out. They'll run two on one. Hazelton, no. Baxter has the board. Hazelton needed to look for his wingman there, Hayes, and he didn't. Mike Hayes just entered the junior out of Hartford. Holden, turn around, hip hook. Baxter has the rebound, and then another collision. It has been a physical game, an up-tempo game, and so far, a game of runs. Maryland at one point led this one 21-7, but UConn with Jim Calhoun barking the orders, 13 straight. Selby, one of the reasons why. And it's now just one. John, we mentioned both teams like to run. So far, it's UConn running to the payoff, though. Well, UConn hasn't been able to do much out of its half-court offense, but they've outscored Maryland 11-2 to two on the break, and that's partly because they don't like to run half-court offense. They like to get up and down the floor, and they've been able to do that during this 13-0 run. Maryland helped by the fact that Maryland missed their last nine, now 10 shots, and now Chris Wilcox breaks the streak. And they had possessed the basketball a dozen times with nothing to show for it. Ending the drought, 23-20, seven minutes to go first half. This is the bb &T classic, seventh annual version. Benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation, Joe Beninati, John Feinstein, Bob Sosi with you tonight. Juan Dixon with another pickpocket, off for Blake. And the foul. Nice finish by Blake there. Great steal by Juan Dixon. If I were an offense, I would always want to know. You know how when you kick off in football, you want to know where the res fast receiver is? I'd always want to know where Juan Dixon is and try not to throw the ball into his quadrant. He's like Deion Sanders used to be playing cornerback. You just didn't want to throw in his direction. And then here you see the nice finish by Blake as he gets fouled. Blake and Dixon, a formidable backcourt for the Terps. Blake, the assist guy. Dixon, the scorer, and the steals, man. Blake has a three-point play. And again, one of the things you have to like about Juan Dixon is that he doesn't let a poor shooting night affect the rest of his game. He doesn't sulk. He doesn't worry about it. He just keeps playing, keeps shooting, and keeps stealing. Tony Robertson back into the game for Coach Jim Calhoun. Robertson with the basketball, streaking ahead. Absolutely undaunted by Lonnie Baxter. Nice finish there. Baxter came to meet him, and he just went up and around him. Turks by four in what has been a track meet, as expected. Guys have been shooting like track, run, track athletes, too. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> Blake pulls up on the dribble. Baxter looking for help. Finds it in Blake. Shot clock just about 10. Dixon drains it for three. Well, I said, shooters keep shooting. That's a big three for Maryland, especially given the run Connecticut just had. Gordon will back it out. Selvi, who was the scoring hero yesterday in the win over the Colonials of GW. Selvi pounds it down there, and he was fouled on his way into the lane. Wilcox playing very aggressive defense. Maybe it's the matching haircuts, I don't know. But Bob Donato saw the foul here. Yeah, grabbed him with the arm there. Good call by Bob Donato. Second personal on Wilcox, seventh team foul on the Terrapins. Looks like Selby and Wilcox go to the same barber, doesn't it? Very similar. Artistic, too. Lefty with that silky touch. Lefties can always shoot, Joe. Notice what hand I'm holding the pen in. Gotcha, Southpaw. I'm the young left-hander. The old left-hander's in Atlanta. 
And you do a wonderful impression of him, well, too. I, <laughs> I was hoping I could beg you to do it. It's not really hard to get me to do it, is it? UConn perfect from the strike. 29-24, Merrill. New time. Easy pickings there in the lane. Gary Williams pleased to see Dixon and Mouton both getting off the schneid on the last couple possessions. Mouton had missed his first five shots. Look at Blake. Just hounding and hawking Gordon. Gordon goes all the way into the rack. Okafor kept it alive, and then it was Mouton who do a little dance in the sideline. Blake finds an open man in the corner. Dixon with some patience. His pass was blocked by Okafor. Quick entry to Baxter. Baxter got bumped, and he lost the ball back over to UConn. Looking a little bit like rugby, the way they're tossing the ball around. As soon as you get tackled, you got to give it up. It's actually a great save by Juan Dixon to keep the ball in bounds and then enter it to Lonnie Baxter, and then great response on the defensive end by the Huskies. Nicholas comes back in. 20-year-old Hempstead, New York. Long Island native. Selvi with Wilcox on the perimeter. Okafor snaps the pass inside. Look at Dixon. That was a bad pass by Okafor, and then Dixon loses it back. Dribbled it off his ankle. Butler on the way, and he was fouled, and Dixon shows his disgust. I think he's more disgusted with himself, to be honest with you, Joe. I don't think he's disgusted with the call, because twi at least twice now, Juan Dixon has made great steals, and then trying to go a little too fast, turned it right back over. I agree. Anxious and angry with himself. And here you see him come in. He fouled him. He knows he fouled him, and he's just disgusted with himself right now. There's a good look at Karan Butler. Outstanding freshman year. Led UConn in scoring and rebounding a season ago. Blake back in for the Terps. Jim Calhoun told me yesterday that he thinks Karan Butler, once he builds confidence in himself, will be a much better basketball player. So he's a great insecure player right now. He still doesn't know how good he is. Another fun college player who prepped at Maine Central Institute. John, am I right? Is that Waterville, Maine area? Way up there, yeah. Johnny Rhodes from Maryland also spent a year there. Colby country. Bowden guy can't talk too affectionately about that. Blake with Nicholas. Looking over the top. Baxter burrowing for some room. Right up and under. The reverse lay-in. Let him catch it there. He'll score every time, Joe. And what is Bowden's nickname? Polar Bears. Like that. As opposed to the white mules of Colby. Polar Bears is better. None of those teams could cover Lonnie Baxter, though. Now, one of the things that, again, one of the most underrated traits of a good center is the ability to catch the ball. And the catch on that play was the key for Lonnie Baxter. Ben Gordon jogs it ahead for UConn. Okafor is blocked shot threat in the first five minutes. Silvi throws up the hook, didn't get it to be answered. Seen a bunch of hooks in, this, in these two games, Joe, but none of them have gone in yet. Baxter shuffled his feet, got it off for Nicholas. It's off Baxter. Right you are, back over to the Huskies in blue. Good hustle by Baxter trying to get that long rebound, but he couldn't corral it. UConn 3-0, Maryland 5-1, entering play tonight in this uh, our bb &T Classic Final. You're joining us a little late. Earlier tonight, GW got the better of Princeton Bonnie. in the consolation matchup. Sylvie out for Gordon, likes the three. Butler, beautiful offensive board and put back. That's three offensive putbacks for Karan Butler in the first half. He's been on the boards much like Lonnie Baxter. I've heard there were a lot of things to like about Karan Butler. Gary Williams won't appreciate him very much until after the game. Because right now, UConn's just five down. The 2001 bb and Classic benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation is brought to you by Geico Direct and by your local Toyota dealer. And back in the final, the bb and Classic here to watch the home state Huskies, the senior senator from Connecticut, Christopher Dodd. What's it like to sit in the nation's capital and watch the Yukon Huskies? Well, it's great. I and mean, we do it actually each year. There's usually a good Georgetown game when they come down this way. And uh, we get a great crowd of the Yukon faithful here in Washington to show up. I got a number of my staff here tonight, and I know the alumni, uh, in the Washington area, come on over. 
And this is a tough game. I mean, this is a Maryland team ranked third in the country. UConn looked like they were being blown out, but they've come back strong. We've got about a five-point game here, and I expect a great second half. But they can keep it close here for the next three and a half minutes. We know about the rabbit following in the state of Connecticut for this basketball team, especially yeah. these times. What does this team need to the state? Oh, it means everything. I mean, this is, you know, Connecticut, we've always had to export our professional sports teams' allegiances. I mean, the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Mets, Rangers, Bruins, that sort of a thing. So the homegrown team for us is the UConn basketball team, both men and women. And, uh, of course, the women's team's ranked number one in the nation. UConn, we were all there. The governor, Roland, and I were there when they won the national championship. Uh, so we follow them very, very faithfully. Well, you mentioned the national championship. The Huskies delivered, whereas the Red Sox have broken so many hearts. Well, that's, Senator, that's, that's so always a problem with the Red Sox. But next year, next year with the Red Sox. There's always next year. Thanks so much. Let's get back to the game. Christopher Dodds, senior senator from Connecticut. Back to you, Joe. Bob and Senator, thank you very much. Don't hold your breath, Senator, on the Red Sox. I'd, I'd stick to pulling for those Husky basketball teams if I were him. Jim Calhoun's track record over 16 seasons would lead you to believe that. Well, the national championship, too. He mentioned the win. 99. Jim Calhoun won a national championship in 1999 down in St. Petersburg. Um, no cars on the line. Typical politician, though, about a five-point lead. They never want to be exact, do they? Never want to commit. <laughs> Hazelton back in off the bench for UConn. Christopher, As we look at Will, Will Cox at the line. Sorry, final Christopher Dodd comment. He's close friends with my literary agent, Esther Newberg, who is as fanatic a UConn fan as there is on the planet. Ryan Randall is making his first appearance in the basketball game. Randall, a junior, junior college transfer, with Maryland in the lead by six, just under three minutes to go in the first half. Maryland, the three-time winner of this event in the first six seasons of its play. Robertson, out for Gordon. Gordon put it on the floor. That was a mistake. Nicholas with a steal. Nicholas juggled it, but got it to go. Yeah, Tim Calhoun screaming for a travel there. You can see why. Drew Nicholas, who hasn't missed a game in his first two seasons plus in College Park, didn't miss that lay-in. Hazelton on the outside. Angles in there for some space. Great rebound. Look up for Wow. Why did he get up? A lot of offensive rebounds at both ends in his basketball game. And part of it is because everybody's quick shooting out of their offense. Omeka Okafor. 14 second chance points now for UConn. Most of their points have been either on the break or out of the, uh, or off the offensive board. Half court set now for Maryland, and Blake will be patient here. As we move under the two minute mark to go in the first half, Blake tries it himself. And Randall came over the top. That was not a good shot by Steve Blake. And I think Gary Williams is making that point to him. Don't force. Blake's had a good oh, half here. Gets Connecticut's pressure defense. He's only got one turnover. One of the things I like about Steve Blake that never shows up in the box score is he is great at on-the-ball defense on the other team's point guard, making it hard to get into their offense. He and Chris Duhon at Duke are, I think, two of the best in the country at that. And when they play each other, it's a great matchup. Hazelton cashes in at the free throw line. He had corrective surgery for some stress fractures in his foot this past spring. They love him offensively. They know he has to be better on the defensive side as Mouton will sit. Jim Calhoun is one of those coaches who isn't giving you extended minutes if you can't guard. Simple as that. UConn absolutely perfect at the free throw line in the first half. 10 for 10. And they're back to four. Down. Blake. On the wing for Nicholas. Skip pass for Blake again. Matched up with Robertson. Gordon sneaking out on Dixon. Nicholas outside for Baxter. Dixon, jumper. Robertson clears the glass for UConn. The Huskies can move it as close as one here with a three. Robertson disdains that and goes right to the glass with a floater. <laughs> That's basically been their offense all night. Just take off to the basket, float, and hope it goes in. Not a lot of passing game in this offense tonight for UConn. Scouting report said Robertson's a fine, penetrating guard. I'll say. Was on that play. Blake. For Dixon. Baxter commanding that basketball. Draws a double team. Blake. Quick feed for Randall. It got away. 
And a hand was there from Selby, too, defensively. Jordan flashing back in on the double clutch. Sprinting off to the side, Nicholas claims it for Maryland. An occasional pass would not hurt the Huskies. <laughs> 36-34 for the Terps. 34 seconds to go in the half. Frantic pace in this one. Dixon got away from his defender. Got Hold the string, shot. though. That's a one Dixon shot. He's got he's to drain that one. And at least the second time in this half, he scolded himself. I mean, he knows that's a shot he's got to make. Last shot time for the Huskies. Ron Dixon having a miserable first half from the floor, trying to turn it up defensively here. Robertson was pressured into a bad shot. As the siren goes, that one is off the target. 36-34 as these two teams trek off to the dressing room. John, we expected it would be up tempo, and they didn't let us down. Oh, that's been it's been run, gun, run, gun, and as I said, not much passing for Connecticut, but we'll see what he thinks. Bob Sosi, let's turn it over to you, courtside. Thanks. Well, thanks so much, Joe. Coach Williams, strong start. UConn counters late in the half. How do you answer back? Well, we have to regroup a little bit here. We had the game going our way, but Connecticut's a good team. They were ranked in the top 25 preseason in every poll. They just haven't played enough games yet to get votes this year. And, you know, we have to keep them from rebounding. We have to keep them from scoring out of transition. If we do those two things, we'll be okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Gary Williams, back to you guys. Bob, much appreciated. Gary Williams' is Terrapins, a slim leader at the half. Stick around. We'll have highlight statistics and a whole bunch more for you in a moment when our BBNO all-time against Maryland. UConn last beating the Terps in the 95 NCAA West Regionals. John, that was the end of the Joe Smith era. Yeah, and that was certainly a significant win for Connecticut, of course, because it was in the NCAA tournament. They then lost to UCLA in the round of eight. And there's one of the all-time great Maryland Terrapins, former Congressman Tom McMillan, class of 1974. As we prepare for the start of the second half, why don't we check in with Bob Sosi at the Connecticut bench. Okay, thanks, Joe. Jim Calhoun, you're down by two, but you've outscored Maryland in second chance points and fast break points. What do those stats tell you? Well, we didn't play with any passion. We acted like a team with a bunch of freshmen and sophomores on early, and uh, I decided to go to half court to talk about it. I wasn't upset with the officials at all, by the way. I was upset with my team, and I think we played a little better since then. We showed a little passion. Could be an interesting second half. How do you carry over that passion to the second half? Uh, we're we're going to carry it over. All the best. Thank you for your time. You. Jim Calhoun, back to you, Joe. Bob, thanks. Matter of fact, Jim Calhoun, oh, we're going to carry it over. He fully anticipates and expects his charges to do just that. And if they do, they're on their way to uh, building on a 4-0 start. They're 3-0 coming into play today off of yesterday's 84-76 win over GW. I'll tell you why they'll carry it over, because they don't want to go back in the locker room and face Jim Calhoun if they don't. And remember when Jim got that technical, I made the point that he was trying to get his team's attention with it. And that is exactly what he did. He had to call two more timeouts before he got it going completely, but he made his point to his team, and now we've got a good basketball game. Jim Calhoun's club squaring off against Gary Williams' troops, and look at where Maryland resides as far as the AP Top 10 is concerned. Well, and Duke number one, Missouri, coached by Mike Krzyzewski, former player and assistant coach Quinn Snyder, number two. We saw they just survived against St. Louis tonight, and then there are the Terrapins at number three. Almost a huge upset tonight, Bob. If VMI had beaten Virginia Tech, that's an unbelievable upset for Bart Belairs if they've been able to pull it off. They lost by one. He's one of those coaches nobody knows who does one of the best jobs in the country every single year down there. One of those close but no cigars, no moral victory type performances. Talik Brown didn't get it to fall right at the uh, outset here of the second half. Maryland in the white, a 36-34 leader. Holden, Blake, Baxter, Mouton, and Dixon on the floor for the Terrapins. Brown, Selby, Okafor, Robertson out there along with Butler for the Huskies. Beautiful move. Yeah. And as Dixon drove inside, Okafor rejected it, but goaltender. Got a little bit late. Nice cut there by Juan Dixon. That's another thing that a good player does when he's not shooting the ball well from outside. He gets inside. Here you see, ball's on the way down. Just by a little, but a little counts in goaltending. 
Okafor early in this contest, in the first couple of minutes, was able to numb the Maryland offensive attack by swatting away a couple of, pe of the shots, particularly off the hand of Lonnie Baxter. That's the second goaltending on the night. Robertson on the perimeter for Karan Butler. Mouton draws that very difficult coverage assignment. Butler working off of the Selby screen. Robertson with five seconds to shoot. Lost his balance on the drive. Still managed to finesse it away from Dixon, but he traveled. Uh, once he went down, Jim Calhoun saying he's still dribbling the ball, but he lost control of it. Not sure he would have gotten the shot off anyway. Good defense there by Maryland on that possession. The clock goes under 10 on Connecticut about once every four years. That was almost Globetrotter-esque. It was a leak possession. Blake force-feeding Baxter. The big guy loves to eat down that low post. Holden drains the outside jumper. Kyle Holden could make that jump shot. He's the best outside shooting big man Maryland has. And his interior defense is going to be very important as the year progresses. Right here it is Holden who is whistled for the foul. Well, he needs to not play interior defense by reaching. And that's what he did. He just reached out there on Butler as he drove baseline. Lecture class continues. Well, they are college students, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Learning all the time. Butler pulled the string. Dixon, a good leaper, long arms, helps him so much in a rebounding capacity. Fumbled it a bit. Holden, who has that great shooting range, will balance up with the quarterback, the point guard, Steve Blake. Worked over by Talik Brown. Mouton comes to get it. Just about two minutes into the second half, Maryland leads by six. Blake pass for Holden, deflected by Selby. It stays Maryland ball with 10 to shoot. Swiftly, it is Wilcox off the bench. And that's what Gary Williams likes to do. Wilcox usually comes in the first two or three minutes of each half. Holden gets the start. One that got away, Wilcox is. One that got away from the state of North Carolina. Particularly North Carolina State. Look at Blake recognizing that the time is running. Baxter trying to get the put down. And that doesn't make Jim Calhoun happy. They force him into a shot at the end of the clock, and there's nobody in blue around the board. Three white uniforms. That's why Jim Calhoun's arms are folded right now. Talik Brown, very fast for the basketball, spins back into the lane. Jim's deflected away. Joe. Joe, he watches this move by Baxter coming in for the rebound. He, he sees the ball go up. And three Maryland characters have position there. It's about to say, Joe, about the Connecticut offense. They pass less than a wishbone. College football Royal running coaching. formation, yeah. The Sooners operated that quite well. Butler on Karam. No sale. Ah, but it started with Texas. Yes, the wishbone. Look at Blake. Arches body there. Wilcox a bit strong on the tap. Maryland has the first six points of the second half. They lead this one by eight. Ben Gordon, sharp shooting freshman, former Mount Vernon High School product. And boy, has that New York area high school produced some great ones. Not sharp shooting so far tonight, though. 0 for 5. Robertson on the outside. Okafor comes to screen. Robertson spins on Dixon, and Dixon is called for the foul. Tell you what, it looked to me, didn't it look to you as if Robertson put his left hand out there and pushed off? I think he could have called that the other way. If I had the ball and Dixon was defending me, I'd hit him with a bat. You had the ball and Dixon was defending you, he'd have the ball. Already, right. Yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> <sighs> me too. Wonders, you've done wonders for my dribbling self-esteem. <laughs> and a holding foul off the ensuing entry pass. Wilcox looking around and saying, who, me? It's four quick fouls for Maryland here in this second half. And three individually on Wilcox. Not in the second half, but total. Selvi leaving it out for Gordon. Taj Holden soon to get back in off of Gary Williams' bench. Gordon. It's five seconds. I don't know why that wasn't five seconds. Hazelton to the glass. No, the first time. Yes, the second. See, that's UConn's offense. Go to the glass, throw it up, and rebound. Right 
comes back. Maryland looking to answer, and Dixon has done just that. 44-36 for the Terps. A little less than four minutes in, Joe Beninati, John Feinstein, Bob Sosi with you tonight from MCI Center in Washington, D.C. This is the final of the BB&T Classic. Hazleton's line drive three won't go. Robertson juggled it, and it's deflected out of bounds. It will stay UConn ball. Robertson had position. Juan Dixon with those long arms that you referenced a minute ago trying to reach over him and uh, get the rebound and deflected it away but out of bounds. UConn's now 0 for 4 from outside the three-point line in the game. Wilcox and Holden continue their carousel in and out, and Robertson finds the range. Blake looking to move time. Steve Blake, very clever with that basketball, has wonderful vision. Rapidly moving up the assist charts. May very well take Keith Gatlin's all-time Maryland record. And there it is, perfect evidence on the alley -oop. We don't need to call her Alice. Jim Calhoun not liking that backdoor cut. And he goes right to Okafor to point out what he did wrong there. That he turned his head, the old ball you man, and he's showing him how you can't turn your back on a guy. If you turn your back on a guy like that, you get dunked. And Steve Blake recognized it right away. Here comes Baxter, easy dunk because Okafor just lost him. It's like, well, again, another football reference, cornerback turning his head. Half a dozen assists for Blake. This 21-year-old junior really set it up splendidly. Not sure if Blake is ACC Basketball Player of the Year material. He may prove me wrong, but earlier we asked this Aflac trivia question, who are the three former Terrapins to win that honor? Who you got? Oh. I, I can't even cheat in time. Len Bias yes. is easy. I'm going to say John Lucas. Yes, in and the then, 70s. And then I'm going to go out on a limb and go way back to Gene Shue. Did he? Did he get it? No, Joe Smith. Should have known. Albert, Albert King. King. I, you know, I should remember that because I covered that team for crying out loud. That's how bad I am. Albert King had a great year. Maryland was picked sixth in the ACC that year. And he was, he, he was easily the player of the year. And Joe Len Smith Bias won it twice, and of course Joe Smith won it his sophomore year and then turned pro. We referenced Smith exiting the college game after that 95 West Regional loss to UConn in the Sweet 16. Albert King's 1980 team also went to the Sweet 16. And Mar Marty Blake hands me a note referring to the infamous Kenny Denard undercut. Absolutely true. 1980 ACC final in Greensboro. There weren't more than 5,000 people in the arena because Greensboro had been socked with us. 20 inches of snow. We all had to drive home from there. There was no way to fly. And Maryland was down one at the very end. Albert King tried a shot defended by Gene Banks. Buck Williams went up in the air to tip it in for the winning Baxter. And Kenny Denard came right under him. Buck never got his hand on the ball. Clock ran out. Duke won. 81 to 80. And uh, Maryland went on and lost to Georgetown that year in the Sweet 16. And that was when John Thompson decided he didn't need to play Maryland anymore. You see, this is one of the reasons I like hanging out with you and Marty, that photographic memory. No, I have a photographic memory as long as Marty reminds me of what I remember. Justin Brown off the bench for Hazleton. Hazleton's bounce pass got away from Selvi, and we are going to get away from MCI Center for a moment. 46-38, Maryland starting to open some breathing room here in the second half. A very good start in the first few minutes. Lonnie Baxter proving himself tough. BB&T Classic, benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation, is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and by Geico Direct. John, I don't expect any Vital-like Windex references from you, but Baxter and Wilcox have been game-breakers on the boards. You are not getting any Vital references from me, but as you can see, eight rebounds apiece, and they've been all over those offensive boards throughout the game. Taj Holden stretching the defense and draining the jumper. And that's really what he does best for Maryland. When he straight, you put it perfectly, stretches the defense with a 6'10 guy making jump shots like that will really help out an offense. 
Brown, a whirling dervish in there at seven foot tall. Didn't get it to go. You're not supposed to be whirling and dervishing when you shoot the basketball. The verb to dervish. Blake looking over top of the Yukon D. I've made up worse words than that, believe me. Blake on the crossover. Dixon will reverse it. Once, then twice. Blake thought about it for three. Butler stepped out on it. Mouton as the shot clock hits nine. There's Holden, another bullseye jumper. Well, Connecticut showing zone here, and Maryland's doing a good job of recognizing that zone and getting movement and finding Holden as the open shooter. Holden with three field goals in the last four minutes. Maryland opening up a dozen point lead, and Baxter's trying to build on it. And Jim Calhoun takes a quick timeout because the lead's back up to 14, and he needs it. It was 14 in the first half at 21-7. It's 14 again. That was just a careless pass out on the perimeter. So just a classic. Brown never had control of the ball. Baxter very aggressive. Recognized the fact that Brown at seven feet doesn't belong at the top of the key. Takes advantage. Takes it in. Easy lap. Notice that he doesn't go for the spectacular dunk. He's not that kind of player. He's just, he's a very effective player who doesn't try to do too much. He plays very well within himself, and that's one of the reasons why he's so good. I thought it was interesting reading some of the clippings about Baxter, particularly a quote from that guy, Gary Williams. He said, you know, he's like it was in the olden times when players came in and spent four years and got better and improved and become pretty good players. Great work ethic. That's why he's the player he is, because of his work ethic. The preseason... Naismith Player of the Year candidate, both uh, Baxter and Dixon for the Terrapins. Tony Robertson on the outside for the Huskies in blue. Karan Butler, hello. Occasional pass doesn't hurt, does it? The pass opened him up, and then Butler really showed off. Connecticut trapping now, trying to change the tempo. They drop back into that zone again. Blake relieving that pressure valve. Robertson switched off on him. Holding away from Selby. I'll notice Selby is extended now over in that corner when the ball comes over there. Once Holden shows you his range, he's got it. Blake for three. Selby juggled it and out of bounds. It goes to UConn. Holden knocked it away. That's a good call. Selby's been very quiet tonight after his big game yesterday. Merrill's done a good job. Going two for five from the field. I knew Marty Aronoff would have that stat right. If you're just jumping on with us from MCI Center, about seven minutes into our second half, Maryland leads UConn by 12. Butler. This time the jumper doesn't go. Again, it's volleyballed around. Selby's left-handed shot won't get in there either. And Baxter frees it up for Maryland. Selby's really struggled, missing some easy shots in this game. Oh, Blake, a thing of beauty inside for Holden, and he got wrapped. No choice but to foul there. If not, it's a dunk. John, Geico Direct provides uh, this moment of the game, and perhaps a turning point with Holden showing that he can drain outside shots. Well, we mentioned in the first half that both teams were playing hard but shooting poorly. And Taj Holden has really come out in this second half to provide some offense for Maryland, especially out of their half-court sets, which neither team has had much success out of their half-court sets. But Taj Holden has provided some offense out of that in this second half. Eight, eight points now if he makes his free throw. Back to 14. Wilcox will step in off of Gary Williams' bench. Taj Holden will get a nice crowd. A hand from the crowd as he makes his way out. Holden starts hitting regularly out there. That makes life a lot easier for Baxter on the inside. Stretches the defense, which is what you want to do as a team. Force the defense to extend. It opens everything up. Talik Brown's a real jet with that basketball. Butler drops it inside. Selby had that shot altered by Baxter and Wilcox, but there was contact. Did you see Karad Butler after the play bat that ball in? Actually the best bucket of the night. That's four personals now on Wilcox. Three of them in the second half. And it's really 
his foul trouble has made the play of Taj Holden that much more significant. And Taj Holden will come right back in here. How about poor Selby at the line? This is just the fourth game on the season for UConn. But Mr. Selby, with all that left-handed smooth, 43% from the line. Made that one. One of two. Holden throws the bomb out there for Dixon. No numbers advantage. Sign of maturity there from Juan Dixon. A lot of times when a player catches a long pass like that, he almost feels obligated to go to the basket even when he doesn't have the ball. Terrapin's leveling things out offensively. Nicholas pilots this offensive set. Mouton in the hell ball. The arrow favors the Terrapins in white. Nice play by Talik Brown, though, recognizing Mouton putting it on the floor with the left hand and coming over to tie him up. Maryland, the two-point lead at the break. Now back up in front by 13. They've got Dixon trapped in the corner. They overplay, they turn it over, and now it's three on one. Karan Butler. That was like a hockey move. He used, he, used the, he used the guy on the other side, Robertson, to draw the defender away so he could go straight to the basket and shoot five holes. He'd be a nice right wing. Dixon on the step back. Tapped out of there by Okafor, and Connecticut will run again. Tilik Brown to Karan Butler. Just short, but you get the sense that Butler is starting to, as they say, feel it. Well, Butler, as, as Jim Calhoun said, it's all about confidence with him. And when he gets on a little bit of a roll, you can see his confidence build. You can see him say, hey, I'm pretty good. I can do this. And he's right. He is. He can. Butler, fast, strong, versatile, can play any of four spots on the floor. Then he becomes a huge matchup problem wherever he is. The one thing he really doesn't have in his game yet, Joe, is a consistent jump shot. And I think that's where the work ethic we talked about with Lonnie Baxter will come into play. If he's willing to work at his jump shot, do what the shooters do, go in the gym, shoot a thousand shots when nobody's there, he can become a good shooter, and then he'll have everything he needs to be a great player. Butler approaching a 20-point performance. He's been perfect at the line. UConn won't go away anytime soon. Maryland has the lead by nine. We put the spotlight on all the ties between UConn and George Washington. Tonight, a gentleman who's one of those connections between Maryland and UConn, former athletic director at Maryland, Lou Perkins, now the current AD at UConn. But, Lou, you hired Gary Williams, bringing him back to the alma mater. Well, you know, Gary's just a great coach and a great friend. And, you know, uh, when I was at Maryland, we were looking for a coach, and uh, we were very fortunate, very, very fortunate that Gary wanted to come back to his alma mater. He's done a great job here. Of course, the Huskies always come to the nation's capital to take on Georgetown. What's it mean to be part of this tournament? Well, you know, this is a great tournament, and it's for a great cause, and we just happen to be a part of it and playing in a great basketball game tonight. Lou, thanks. All the best in the Big East. Thanks, Bob. Back to you guys. Okay, Bob, travel against Maryland. The Terrapins have won five straight coming into this BB&T championship final. UConn on a three-win roll. 54-45 for Maryland. The turnover story, Connecticut has uh, turned it over just a shade more. Interesting, Maryland goes zone now out of this timeout, Joe, trying to stop some of that Connecticut penetration. Good hands by Mouton. And Talik Brown dribbled it on the mid-court line. That's a turnover back to the Terps. 17 now against Jim Calhoun's squad. And again, that was a sign of Connecticut's inexperience. They didn't recognize the zone. They recognized it, but they didn't react to it. Threw a, a pass right into the heart of it. Mouton with quick hands made that play to set up the turnover. Both of these teams, 20-win programs a season ago. Blake. Off for Holden. Drew Nicholas pounds it on the deck, tries to find Mouton, and right off of his hands and out of play. Disappointing year for UConn, though, last year. Joe, 20 and 12, went to the NIT. They expect to be in the NCAA every year. Only 8 and 8 in the Eastern Division of the Big East. Talik Brown with Karan Butler. Robertson again playing catch with Butler. 
force feeding it to the inside, and that was not a smart looking pass. Well, and again, let's give Gary Williams, Luke Perkins talked about him a minute ago, a nod for that change, going to zone, which is out of character for Maryland. But two straight possessions, Connecticut's been unable to do anything with it. Blocking foul on the inside. Nice change up by Gary. Sometimes you got to come with your change up instead of your fastball. Maryland, we mentioned 25 wins last year, beaten in the NCAA semis by Duke. Selvi back in, Hayes out. UConn's programs average, what, 27 wins over the last eight years? So, yeah, maybe 20 and 12 is a down campaign. Ever since 1990, when they won 31, they've been one of the outstanding programs in the country. There's another foul. Nicholas drawing it on Okafor. Only the third team foul on UConn, or second team foul on UConn in this half. Didn't have any until these last two possessions. Nicholas taking a page out of Juan Dixon's book there, John. Looked very similar, attacking off the wing. Well, a, a smart player learns from an All-American. Drew Nicholas has been going to practice every day with Juan Dixon for two years plus now. Some of that's bound to rub off. And he's got those long arms, too. Yep. Quality reserve. He'd probably start with the, the great many other programs around the country. A little forceful there with a free throw. Talik Brown off for Karan Butler. Butler taking matters into his own hands again. And Okafor stashes the rebound. Well, the key there was they beat that Maryland defense down the floor and got the shot off before Maryland could set up that zone. Ameka Okafor has six. UConn trailing here by eight. Nicholas Blake, Holden, Baxter, Dixon out there in white for the Terrapins. Butler, Brown, Selvey, Okafor, and Robertson for the Huskies on another knife-like drive through the heart of the Connecticut defense. Another foul. Really nice curl cut by Juan Dixon there. Catches him up in the lane, one dribble. And they had no choice but to foul him or he would have gone all the way to the basket. He asked for it, and he got it. Said the F word, foul. Scared me there for a second. <laughs> Dixon knocks down another freebie. Probably Double subs in, in for too. UConn. Ben Gordon, Justin Brown in. Okafor and Robertson check out. Juan Dixon is about as close to automatic at the free throw line as you can possibly be. Yeah, how about 97 and a half percent? That's pretty, pretty automatic. Ben Gordon. Slow start offensively for him. This coming one night after a very, very good off-the-bench performance helped UConn beat GW. He's 0 for 5 tonight. Hasn't had a shot in the second half. Maryland's still in that zone, and Connecticut looks right now like they've ever seen a zone. Gordon, 4 of 9 yesterday from 3. Bangs one in there. That was good recognition by Talik Brown. Nice drive and dish there. One of the first times all night they've done that. Blake shuffling away from Brown. Talik was whistled for the foul. Justin made the block after the fact. Gee, I, I don't have a problem with the foul. I thought it was on the floor, though, and Art McDonald says, no, it's going to be two-shot foul. Looked like, looked like Blake still had it on the floor when Brown fouled him. Art McDonald, Bob Donato, Donnie Gray officiating the championship game of the 7th Annual BB&T Classic. Steve Blake does not increase Maryland's lead just yet. It stands at seven. Blake took over this point guard role as a freshman, took over extremely well. Yeah, he's only started since his first game as a freshman. Mm. And Gary Williams basically, when he walked into school, said, here's the basketball, give it back to me in four years. And with life in the ACC, as good as those point guard matchups can be, but that would be scary for a freshman. I'm sure it was, but he handled himself well. Talik Brown backing away. Oh, what a rebound that was by Butler. Karan Butler didn't get it. Selby tries his hand at it. Whistle, foul, it'll come against the Terps. And that one is on the floor. And that'll be 16 fouls on uh, Maryland, I believe. Fourth on Holden. And that's more significant, that it's four on Holden. Holden and Wilcox each with four. And those two guys, who are somewhat interchangeable parts, will shuffle in and out for one another here. And Gary will shuttle them. And whichever one uh, stay, does not foul out will remain in the game. 
Whoops. Malik Brown lobbing one in there. Dixon got a hand in the way, and this is no trouble for Drew Nicholas. That's a real rookie mistake, even though he's a sophomore. Throwing that block pass in the direction of Juan Dixon, that's asking for trouble. Nicholas was good against Illinois in that huge win at Cole Fieldhouse, keeping that non-conference win streak alive for Maryland. Best game of his career. A dozen points off the bench. Talik Brown directing traffic out there. Shot clock hits a dozen. Connecticut really struggling against the zone. They, they really don't know exactly what to do with it. Gordon, that's what to do with it. That's what you do with it. And Gary Williams is screaming at his players, get up on him, he can shoot. He made his last two, three attempts. Yeah, I don't know if I blame the defense on those. Those are pretty good shots. Nicholas inside for Dixon. 14 points for Ron Dixon. A nine-point cushion for the Terrapins. 7.45 to go regulation. And now Dixon rotating over towards Gordon after getting screamed at. <laughs> Gordon showing off that high dribble. Around the screen comes Talik Brown. Sliding between defenders. No, Justin Brown, a put back. Slapped out of there by Lonnie Baxter. Jim Calhoun saying, why is it goal pending at my end, but not at this end? That discussion continues as we make our way to break. We have seen some high-flying heroes here in this second half. John Feinstein in basketball, it's legal to be a thief, and Juan Dixon is a cat burglar extraordinaire. Well, and that was set up good inbound defense by Maryland. They don't guard the inbounders, which inbounder, which creates a five-on-four situation. And Talik Brown, as I said, made the mistake of throwing the ball in the direction of Juan Dixon. The beat goes on for Dixon, a tournament record here at the bb and t A dozen steals over the two-day affair. Nothing new for Juan Dixon. He barely got that one in. Sorry, Joe. 62-53, Maryland. UConn has the basketball. Down nine. Gordon, acrobatic. Didn't get rewarded. Back Luke. to the wishbone. <laughs> they need to look for that pitch man on the cage. Maryland with a lot of inside shots here in the second half, shooting 67%. Lonnie trying to add to that. And he drew the foul on Justin Brown. Well, Justin Brown cannot guard Lonnie Baxter in the low post without help. And the help either has to come from one of his teammates or it's going to come from a whistle saying, okay, Justin, you're watching shoot two free throws, which actually is better for Connecticut than Baxter going to the basket and laying the ball up and in. Talked about Justin Brown from down under, same high school program that uh, gave the Chicago Bulls eventually Luke Longley. By way of the University of New Mexico. There you go. Lobos. Played his last college basketball game in Cole Fieldhouse. He did? Yeah, NCAA tournament 1991. New Mexico played, uh, played there in the first round. And was beaten. And I'm blocking on who beat them. It'll come to me, though. Graphics showed you Maryland shooting better than its seasonal average at the line tonight. Baxter, in particular, 6 for 8. 64-53, it's back to a double-digit cushion for the Terrapins. Ameka Okafor, tough shot. Another hard-fought rebound for Karan Butler. Oh, as he had a fine second half. Really all over those offensive boards. This is fifth one of the night. And I think he's got, I think he's scored off of all five of them. 20 points for Karan Butler. Juan Dixon matched up with Ben Gordon. Baxter got a step. Again, Baxter catches it in the low post. They're either going to have to foul him or he's going to score. 22 for Lonnie. It's turned it into a field day. Selby outside Robertson. Quick swing for Karan Butler. Go with the hot guy. That one didn't stay down for him yet. It deflects off of Baxter and out of play. Well, that was a shot out of their offense. He needs to get the ball off the board. He's most effective that way, at least tonight. Gordon calling for the set play. Butler springs open. Just under six minutes to go in the second half. Maryland trying to win for the fourth time in seven years in this bb and t tournament. They're the defending champs, having beaten GW last year. 
The Colonials, a winner earlier today, besting Princeton by three. Gordon on the outside. Pulls the trigger. Oh, that was great defense by Steve Blake. Right in his face. And then Gordon gets serenaded by the Maryland partial. Well, oh, Dixon lost the handle. Huskies will run. Robertson outside. Gordon back for Tony. He'll fire. Selby juggled it off of his hands as that was contested there by Baxter. Look at these two guys working the sidelines. Oh, they'll work. They'll work 40 minutes and work more if you wanted to. A lot of energy. Jim Calhoun, 61 years old. Gary Williams, believe it or not, 56 years old. Youthful looking, as he likes to point out to me. But they uh, they both work very hard. And you, you would not think, looking at these guys, that they had over a thousand wins between them. You would think they were rookie coaches trying to prove themselves. I watch them work and I want to hand them a throat lozenge ahead of time. They have people who do that for you. Okay. <laughs> Three-point story, you see that cold. Mouton, Blake. Robertson right in his grill. Turnabout spare play, I guess. Blake just deed up Gordon quite well. Wilcox spinning. Got Selby on his hip. Whistle, foul. And this goes against the Terrapins. And that'll be one and one, and Chris Wilcox is out of the game with five fouls, so Taj Holden will come back in. How often do you see that happen, Joe? Guy misses a relatively short, easy shot, gets frustrated and commits a foul on the rebound. That's the fifth on Wilcox. His night is over. Nine boards, a couple of blocks, and five points, as you see, spelled out. Here's a non sequitur for you, Oklahoma State. That's who beat New Mexico and Luke Long in his last college game. Just, came just a cowboy inspiration? I don't know. I was just trying to picture it in my mind because I was at the game. I had a senior moment there. It's okay. It's that photographic memory. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's negative. And the film blanked out on him. Mouton. Entry was... Looked like it was kicked there by Butler, wasn't it? No, he just knocked it out of bounds. Quick hands. Ooh, very quick. He does have quick hands. A couple times he stuck his hand in there and created steals or near steals tonight. Exceptional player, Karan Butler, this 21-year-old sophomore All-America candidate, leading the Husky attack. Holden opening up in the backcourt. Good thing Taj Holden doesn't play for Ralph Region. Wide open. Six foot ten tight end wouldn't be bad though. He would have some reach. Dixon off on the way for Blake. Further to the corner and Mr. Holden says I may not catch it smoothly but I can shoot it that way. I think Gary Williams will keep him around. That's 11 now for Holden. 69, 55, the lead. Once again, at that magic number of 14. Blake now closing in on double digits in the assist column. Robertson feeds Selby. And that's what we saw yesterday. Yeah, Selby's saying, finally, where's that been all night? Nine for Selby unofficially. Three of seven from the floor for the senior from Michigan. Dixon on the pull-up. Okafor rips it out of there. Talik Brown just gliding ahead. Robertson. Tony Robertson looking for an alleyway to the basket. Butler picks up Selby. He'll try it again, this time off the glass. I don't think he called that one. Now watch and see if Merrill doesn't milk some clock here because Gary Williams was very upset with that last quick shot Juan Dixon took. Selby, the third leading scorer for the Huskies a season ago, former junior college national player of the year. Blake. And Mouton slowing things down. And as Mouton put it in gear, Butler fouled him on the outside. Really foolish foul by Butler. 25 feet from the basket after Maryland milked 20 seconds. If you want a foul, you foul early in the shot clock. So Jim Calhoun saying to Karan Butler right now, calm down, use your head. 69-59 for the Terrapins. They've got a date this Sunday with Detroit at home. Monmouth comes in to Cole next Tuesday. Detroit is one of those sneaky good teams. 
Barry Watson was really fine up. In fact, Detroit beat Connecticut in the NIT last year, second round in store. UConn, which splits its home schedule from the Hartford Civic Center and Gamble Pavilion. Selby's jumpers off the mark. Butler juggling it and off of Blake out of bounds. UConn has Northeastern on campus at Gamble this coming Saturday. Gary Williams isn't concerned with that. He's concerned with this one's finish. Maryland protecting a 10-point lead over the guys in blue. We reach the 10 o'clock hour here in our nation's capital. MCI Center hosting the BB&T final. Two highly visible programs uh, matching up in the finals. Our America Online storyline, if you're just joining us on the broadcast, John, the big guns for both teams, they've shot straight. Baxter and Butler, you figured they'd lead the charge. Well, you know, Karan Butler, all five of those rebounds are offensive boards, and he scored off them. Lonnie Baxter going for the proverbial double-double, the most overrated stat in sports, but still 22 points and nine rebounds. Very impressive, and Maryland has shot superbly in this second half, 63%. Talk about the visibilities of these two programs as Gordon makes himself aware in the lane. Got Lonnie Baxter up, and Baxter disagrees with this call, but the foul is against the Maryland big man. Both of these programs raving about their recruiting classes. With good reason from what I'm told. Gary Williams has one of Morgan Wooten's best coming from DeMatha, Travis Garrison. I've seen Travis Garrison. I saw him in the city championship game right here in MCI Center last year, MCI Arena last year when uh, DeMatha won yet another city championship for the great Morgan Wooten, and Garrison's a very impressive young player. Quick to the basket, 6'10", can shoot the 15-footer. He'll be, he'll be outstanding. Gordon's second free throw rattles around and out. UConn is very high on Rashad Anderson, who they're getting out of the Lakeland, Florida area next year. 69-60, Terps, two and a half to go in this one. Again, Maryland will try to milk the clock a little bit here. Force Connecticut out of their zone. No reason for them to put shoot. Dixon, arc the pass for Nicholas, distributes for Blake. Now they set the offense, try to get a shot, but they don't need to. That's really a bad, another bad foul by Karan Butler. That's a sign of inexperience. Went for the steal, committed the foul, the clock was at eight. So Maryland gets to kill 27 seconds and go to the free throw line. An understatement to say Butler and Calhoun disappointed with that call, too. I thought he reached in. Karan Butler now with four. The Husky high scorer watching the Terrapin high scorer add to his mark. Lonnie Baxter at the free throw line, seven for nine tonight. It's an improvement for Lonnie by a considerable margin over yesterday. Now eight out of ten versus yesterday's three out of ten. Just a 49% free throw shooter in the young season is Baxter. Talik Brown hanging out in the corner. Maryland by 11, just about two minutes to go. Second hand. Ben Gordon straight away for Talik Brown. Nicholas on him. Brown spins back into trouble. Oka Ford didn't tap it home. He did outlet it for Gordon. Find space, dumps it in there down low. Selby got ripped off. And it will be UConn basketball. Still a great play by Juan Dixon flashing over there. I mean, his hands and feet are so quick on plays like this. And he's smart. He's just a really smart player. Fifth year senior out of Baltimore. And comes right over. Great play. Coaches and players alike call him fearless. Never afraid to go in there and get his nose bloody, as he did right there. Of course, uh, by rule, if you if you if you bleed on court, you got to come out of the game. I, he's not hurt. It's just the rules require that he get cleaned up before he can come back in. My guess is it won't be long. Trainer J.J. Bush over there, very experienced. UConn trailing by 11 under two minutes to go in the second half. And a violation. Maryland's done a really good job on those inbounds passes, creating havoc for UConn using that five-on-four approach of not guarding the inbounder. Frankly, I don't know why more teams don't do that. UConn now pressing. 
In a desperate situation, Blake carries the mail. Leading the Terrapin charge. 137 to play. Blake finds Holden. Nice penetration by Blake. Nice cut by Holden. Blake now with nine helpers. Gordon off for Karan Butler. Little one-on-one -on -one game with Holden. Knocked him down. Uses the glass at a very sharp angle, and Okafor cleans up the garden. That's, uh, that's, that's our offense. Throw it off the glass and go, like in the schoolyard a lot. Blake, under a lot of heat, lobbed it ahead for Baxter. Selby comes out to challenge on Nicholas. Maryland fans putting their hands together now, under a minute, with their team enjoying an 11-point bulge. Maryland on the way to their sixth win consecutively after that loss to Arizona. Nicholas arcs it over Okafor and hits. And that, ought to, that ought to do it. I was a little hesitant with an 11-point lead in one minute to go to say it's over after what happened January 27th in Paul Fieldhouse last year, but now I can say it. Gordon Wow from deep, and I mean deep. Ben Gordon, all three baskets for him this evening from behind the arc. Heated up late, 0 for 5 early, but made his three of his last four. Holden got held there in the backcourt. 75-65, Taj Holden and the Maryland Terrapins. And again, even though Jim Calhoun is going to be disappointed with this loss, as you always are, I think both coaches leave here tonight feeling pretty good. Gary Williams with the victory, obviously. His team withstood a couple of runs that UConn made, made the plays late when it had to. Jim Calhoun, on the other hand, a very young team. As we mentioned, got off to a bad start in this game. Got rallied his troops, trailed by two at halftime. And Maryland was just a better team. John, our thanks going out to all those involved with the bb &T Classic, obviously yourself included, being so instrumental in the field and such. Thanks to the sports information directors for helping us prepare. Another super event, and Blake won't let it end without a steal of his own. Uh, another great two days of basketball, Joe. But, you know, it sounds cliche to say the most important thing, though, is where this money's going to go. Just terrific for needy children in the area. Eight seconds left. Holden will dribble it out. Connecticut will yield. And Maryland, the bb and champs in 96, 98, 2000, and now 2001. Gary Williams will come across to uh, wish Jim Calhoun well the rest of the way. UConn falling to Maryland tonight by a dozen. Lonnie Baxter, Juan Dixon, many to underline for the Terrapins tonight, but our player of the game this evening, well-deserved for Lonnie Baxter. And I don't think there's any doubt Lonnie Baxter will receive the MVP trophy here in a couple minutes when the award ceremony takes place. And I think Juan Dixon, even though he didn't shoot all that well, will be on the all-tournament team for the third straight year. So, good night, good weekend for the Maryland Terrapins. Gary Williams, Lonnie Baxter, Juan Dixon. And Taj Holden really chipping in there with some excellent shooting in the second half. Dixon ended up with 16 points and six steals. Steve Blake, nine assists on the night. And Baxter, as we said, 24 points and 10 rebounds. And Holden had all 15 of his points in the second half. The Terrapins for the first time in the, their history with three different 1,000-point scorers on the roster. They didn't blister UConn. They beat them, though, 77-65.